get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with Matt Lynch in Marbella. I'm joined by Tommy Martin. Um, right, this is a, a bit of an unorthodox interview, shall we say, because... It's you, not an interview. <laughs> it's not really an interview, because um, due to the, obviously, the reason that you're not going to be able to box anymore, you've, you've written a statement, you thought that was yeah. the best way to try and explain to people uh, what's gone on, what's happening now, and obviously moving forward for you so yeah, it's just basically because i'll just forget absolutely everything that has gone on and i'll get muddled up so i thought i'm buying <laughs> that's all right so if you're wondering why tommy keeps looking down <laughs> that's why you you crack on mate. yeah yeah um <clears throat> to my friends family and support from all over these years not just as a pro but as an amateur as well as you all know i've had a lot going on behind the scenes from personal reasons to losing the john wayne hibbert fight and then from the fight, all the drama from being in and out of the hospital due to the bleed on the brain. So I thought it was only right to tell you the reasons for not coming out public about it all. Starting from fight night, after the great fight between me and John Wayne Hibbert, I went back to the change room and don't remember a thing. The one thing I recall is my girlfriend at the time picking me up off the shower cubicle floor to then somehow getting carried outside and put into the taxi back to the hotel. From then, I had my close friends and family around me whilst I was out of it. Lucky enough, P. E. McDonald was there to call Eddie Earn and get a doctor straight out to me. I was then rushed to Bart's Health Hospital where I was on a drip to bring me back around, which worked and I was monitored overnight. The MRI scan that night come back fine and there was no bleed on the brain, so I was allowed home. Thinking nothing of it and thinking I was fine, I carried on like I normally do. I went back to Cambridge, had our after party, and I even went out to Dublin for a few days and enjoyed a Guinness. When I got home from Ireland, I was eager to get back in the ring and move on from the first defeat as quick as possible. So I started at home, just the usual running and a bit of fitness to get the weight back down. A few days into this, I started getting some headaches. I took myself down Hinchinbrook Hospital where they sat me in a waiting room for four or more hours when, and I was in excruciating pain, and all they'd done for me was tell me to take a couple of headache tablets and I'll be fine, with no scan. This terrible pain never stopped, and I knew there was more to it, so I took myself to my GP, and they got me an ambulance to Addenbrooke's, where I got an MRI, and they found the bleed there. It was only a minor one, they said, and a few days rest, I should be okay, and that will heal itself. So a few days rest, a few tablets later, I was feeling fine. Naturally, I took myself back down the gym in London as losing the last fight was eating me up inside. I started warming up, done a light bit of shadow and knew I wasn't right. Not telling my coach what has happened previously and what has been going on, he panicked and got an ambulance to the gym, which took me to the Royal London, where they found the bleed had increased and got worse. So they kept me in for a full week. The hospital was great and I, they couldn't have looked after me any better. But I hated the sight of seeing the same four walls and being stuck in bed and just wanting to get out of there. Me being me, I was panicking, didn't want no one knowing I was in there except for family. I was scared. I can't thank my family enough and my little brother George who was there day and night for me and also my coach Barry. Without them two making me laugh 24-7 and to keep that smile on my face, I'd have been in a serious darker place than I was. I was hearing so many different opinions from people telling me who to tell, who not to tell. So I thought it was best not to tell anyone and to carry on like normal when I got out. From finally leaving the hospital and having a few weeks off, I started getting really depressed. And for some reason, I was getting angry at the people closest to me. After the long rest, I got a phone call from Eddie saying I was on the Leeds bill. This was a massive boost. With finally my life back, it felt, I put all my time and strength into my training away from home, back in London full time. We was absolutely flying in the gym. I got back in unbelievable shape. Then we even flew out to Marbella for a couple of weeks to MGM to finish off the last hard part. Whilst being out there, I find out I had big problems at home with the ex-girlfriend. But where I, had my, where I had my boxing back, it felt like nothing could stop me. Boxing is everything to me. I then come home 
and here the board have found out that I was in hospital and want my results. So of course, once I received them, I was pulled off the show. After all them months of training and all them thousands spent in camp, I then hit an all time low. All these months of suffering on my own and not telling no one what was really going on was pointless and it got back to the board anyway. So due to the people finding out, Junction 17 and my team at MGM Marbella, Anto and Daniel, got me to see Dr. Hamlin, at the neurosurgeon, for more scans to get his advice on boxing again. Scans come back fine with just a little bit of scarring from the bleed. And he says how there is no difference from my brain before the fight to after the fight that I can, and that I can box again. Knowing this, I got my hopes up and I started training. Then to find out the board are not willing to take the risk. This is when reality really hit that everything I've ever worked so hard for and put my all into is just being taken away and there is nothing I can do to stop it. To say I'm in a dark place was an understatement. I felt worthless. I felt just that no one wanted, would want to talk to me or be a part of me. And just felt that without boxing, But thanks to Anto and Daniel, they have given me the light at the end of the tunnel. So it is with utter regret that today I am announcing my, my retirement as a fighter. This has absolutely killed me, but unfortunately for me, this is the end of the road as a boxer. Fortunately, with the great team I have around me in MGM, they have given me the opportunity to work closely with the fighters and are helping me get through this hard time by giving me responsibilities within the team to help the boys, whether it's from coaching, managing, representing, whatever role I'm given, I'll work my arse off for them and give them nothing but 100%. I truly am blessed as people know I'm a strong believer in Christ and I can't praise him enough for the people he has put around me. I'm truly grateful. So it's the time to turn this negative to a positive, put all this fire and passion I have inside me back into these fighters. Finally, last of all, I just want to thank everyone that has been a part of my journey. From turning pro down the TKO with Johnny Eames, to all of my mad support I had from my first fight to my last, that just kept growing. My trainer Barry Smith that put his heart and soul into me every day, making me not just the, man, not just the fighter, but the man I am today. Eddie Hearn for believing in me at such a young age, and all of the matchroom team for always looking after me and doing a great job. My sponsors that stayed with me from the beginning right up until now, which as everyone knows from every interview, that is Junction 17. Without Colin, the owner, not looking after me from day dot, it would have been so hard to stay in the gym 24-7 and dedicate my whole entire life to the sport, which I'm so grateful for. And then to find MGM was an absolute blessing. I'm so excited to see what the future holds with the Marbella boys. And finally, the British Boxing Board of Control for probably saving my life. Yes. You alright? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, I Can't mean, that, that's a, kind of a, a summary of your last sort of seven, seven to eight months mm. about what's been going on. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a silly question to ask you whether where you are is in regards to whether you're, you've come to deal with it in terms of acceptance, because it's going to take a while, that, isn't it? Mm. I think, uh, yeah, at the minute it's just, it's war. It's all I've ever wanted to do as a, as a kid. It's all I've ever known. Um, but listen, like I said, I've had positive meetings with Daniel and Anna, and they are more than willing to help me through it, and put my knowledge back into these boys, you know? Do you, somewhere in you see the, the bigger picture, how you, you're quite in a, really in a blessed position, rather than uh, look at it negatively, mm. that you're not going to be able to box again, and obviously that's your life, but your life is your life. Mm. So of you, course, I know, like for me, like we, me and my brother, we talk about it a lot, and because it eats me up inside and I do take it out on everyone. I take it out on all my family and I shouldn't because at the end of the day, they're the ones that had to see me in the state I was in. And and I was scared. I was just so scared to get it, let the cat out of the bag about me being in hospital. And it happened and it, and it does made and it happened. I think it was the, the week before um, 
Nick Blackwell went into hospital as well. And I actually, Nick actually knew. I phoned Nick the day, two days before his fight and told him. And I feel like, not that I'm to blame for his injury. <laughs> I just feel that, oh, I just don't get this mad, this mad year of bleed on the brains has just gone crazy. <coughs> and, it, but yeah, back to boxing. I'd box tomorrow if I could, but my brother goes, you don't see what we had to, you don't see what we had to put up with. You you couldn't even talk to us, and but I don't remember them times, and all I remember is fighting, you know? And all I, I took myself, I couldn't wait to take myself back to the gym, Coogan. I couldn't wait to get back in there. But. You've, uh, throughout your uh, career, you've obviously had, you've had good friends, you obviously have family, uh, good support from, from every angle. Yeah. And, you know, now that you're not going to box anymore, I mean, you're going to sort of see the, not the benefits of that, but see who's really there for you. Definitely. And do you know what? I really, I really have seen my friends in this last month, I say, since it's like more of information's come out. I really have seen people that are, I never even thought was close to me have been there for me and made sure I was all right. Even when, even little things like being on my own, I'm suffering. I'm thinking about boxing the whole time. I can't get it off my, I can't get it off my mind. And, it even hurts me to that. I just wish I never took myself to hospital after having headaches. And it sounds stupid because I know I had the bleed. But I believe I'm all right now. And I, I still, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm still in denial. I think I'm still in denial about it. And it just hurts. It just hurts bad. But that's kind of a, a fighter's mentality uh, to say what you're saying now. You, The key is the people around you to I say, know. look... Mm. It's going to work, it's going to be difficult for however long, but this is how it is. And yeah. the fact that you can sit here and have this interview is a, is a blessing. Definitely, definitely isn't it? Like, to be in the situation, I, if someone said to me, Tom, before my, I turned pro, you could fight for the Commonwealth title, you know? I'd have been like, no, don't be stupid. Because I wasn't an exceptional amateur. I didn't, I didn't go to the Olympics, I didn't do nothing like that, you know? So I didn't even do the senior ABAs, I turned pro at 18. So, yeah, if I look at from there, but... I feel like from now, I've grown so much as a fighter in the last two, three years. I had so much more to give, and it's just frustrating. It's frustrating, that's all. I remember, um, I think it was your second or third fight, your call. Um, this is before, obviously, mm -hmm. you went to Eddie and Matcham, and I just remember you being this, right, talkative, persistent, I'm not about in front of the camera. I remember that time where <laughs> you had a, a close-ish fight at your call, and oh, here we go. Yeah, you, go on. We all remember, know. Go on. And, uh, you went to me. Thirteen wins you in went, the struggle. You went, what, did, what did you think? And I thought, <laughs> I thought well, I could lie. I could <laughs> lie. I just thought, uh, but that wasn't one of your best nights, and you no. know it wasn't. I know it wasn't. Um, and I remember, I remember Big going. Andy <laughs> Harris. <laughs> no, but I remember going away thinking, oh my god, what did I just say there? But I just thought, <laughs> oh, we're going to be one of these people that because this is about yeah. what three, three, four years ago. I loved you for that. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, but you I'd rather me, have just said to you, like, yeah. just from what I saw, listen, what do I know? Man with a, an idiot <laughs> with a camera, you're the boxer. But I remember saying it to you, and I felt really bad after that. I remember really <laughs> feeling bad and saying... That one, you must have felt what, bad for two, if did. it's still sick in your mind. I did. That it must does. really have done you it does, that because have. usually, like, but I've just... I kind of avoid it. Do you know when yeah. there's a close fight between two of, like, British fighters? Used and someone have. goes... And the what other fighter, think? what do you think? And I, I've said this on camera the other day. I've only lied once <laughs> in a situation between two two Brits fighting, and it wasn't the right time to tell this Brit that no, actually, you did lose that fight. So I lied. I've done it once. I've never done it since. But um, listen, like I said, there's plenty of highlights from from your career, and and, and the Hibbert fight will be a highlight, uh, even though it wasn't to be your night, and subsequently uh, would be your last fight. But I had, I had a positive meeting with, with with the Marbella boys and we was actually sitting around the table and they said, because everything, obviously I was broken, I was crying, I was telling them that I didn't know what to do and that it's ruined me and all that. And they said, maybe, like they said, listen, you believe in God, maybe you wasn't meant to win that fight and you was, and this was all meant to happen, you was meant to come and work with us, you was meant to this, open up this new world, you know, and that's how I've got to look at it. I've got to look at it as a positive now. And the people I've met in this game, it's unbelievable. And I'm so grateful and blessed for the people I'm going to be working with in the future. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that side of it. But I just wish I could lace the gloves up one more time. 
Well, listen, like I said, what, whatever takes you from now, um, main thing is your health's intact ahead of anything. Mm. Ahead of any fight you've had, whether you become world champion, British champion, whatever it is, n- none of it converts to your health. And you know, I know. Health is wealth. Of course. So, uh, we'll consider giving you a job on IFL. Yeah. <laughs> Big up Sky Sports now. I need a, I need a, they need a new pundit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, listen, Tommy, w- we... I'm going to try and do our best not to... I know sometimes when boxers are retired and they sort of slip out the game and it's easily forgotten because you, you, everyone's so concentrated on the current boxing and scene and what's going on and people well, are overtaking that. It's like a conveyor belt, isn't it? It's like a conveyor Pretty belt. Pretty much, yeah. Us fighters are just on a conveyor belt, mate. Yeah. Pretty so, much. <laughs> so, um, dog dog world. Like I said, best of luck in moving forward and... Getting over this because it's going to take a while for it, it, for it to properly sink in. But um, like I said, you've got good people around you, so thank you and James as well for always following me about since day dot as well. So it's been uh, the coverage you have done from the small hall shows to the bit. I know now all of a sudden you're just big time, but the small hall <laughs> shows back in the day three four years ago when Do you I, were, when uh, you're uh, sleeping in cars to fit, make sure you got your footage. <laughs> <laughs> We Big still up. do that now. Yeah, yeah. All right. But they're just Range Rovers and they're yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but listen, thank you for giving us time because uh, without you, we ain't even got a channel. So <laughs> No, it's true. Yeah. Without boxers, we ain't even got anything. So uh, we're very grateful to that. And um, like I said, uh, chin up and good to see you at the show. Uh, you watched a bit of boxing tonight. It must be hard. Mm, and I'm going on there. You're going to go on. <laughs> okay. And uh, listen, we'll definitely catch up with you um, sooner rather than Hopefully later. Hopefully that in my bail. Definitely. Hopefully out there, in the sun. I think they're going to put you in charge of kickboxing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know about as much as kickboxing, there's tiddlywinks. <laughs> All right, Tommy Martin, listen, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And um, like I said, we'll definitely catch up with you soon, mate. Brilliant, sir. Thanks, Julian. Right. No problem.